Hello, darling. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yay! I'm good. I'm yeah, yeah. I'm very good. Thank you very much. In good spirits, good head, good yeah. health. Brilliant. Oh, you know? I'm so glad to hear that, especially yeah. this time. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I appreciate no, it. Yeah. Thank you so much for agreeing to do. It. I kind of asked Sue, and I was like, oh. <laughs> she was like, yeah, <laughs> and I was like, oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, I want to do it 100 million percent. So, oh, yeah. yeah, thank oh, you for having me. No, absolutely fine. Thank you for taking your time out of your day. What have you been doing today? Let me turn you there. There we go. There we go. I've got you uh, sort of long way. You know what I mean? You know, that sort of way. I, I, fuck it, I don't know how this thing goes. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that. We'll fine. leave it like that. Uh, <laughs> today, <laughs> I've been um, so I. I've been working because I at the moment during this pandemic, it's been a bit hard because obviously, you know, um, what with the, uh, the 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 entertainment industry buggered, so to speak. Yeah. There's just there's no work, so and that goes for everybody unless unless you get on something like you know I'm a celeb or something, then brilliant. But <laughs> for, you know, people like me, you know, it's paying the bill. So I'm I work for a car parts company delivering car parts. Okay. So I'm sort of. I've only, I've only, like, I'm, I'm training at the moment, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's good. And then I just done a workout. I done a workout. I done my ten thousand steps today. Oh, because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm get my body looking good. Because um, my coach, I got a coach, you see. Oh, okay. So I'm trying to get looking good. Yeah. So, <laughs> and that's it. Down feeling fresh. <laughs> oh, do you know, that's the thing. I want to be out. Uh, I this lockdown, I want to go into the gym thinking, yeah, I look all right. Yeah, <laughs> don't so, real. <laughs> it's fucking hard, especially when you get to 40, darling, I'm telling oh. you. <laughs> it really, how old are you? I'm 23. Do you know what? I found this picture the other day. Um, yeah. Let me show you this picture. Oh, my God. I know, that was a, um, a football event. I forgot which one it was. Um, I think it's like two oh. maybe. Whereabouts? I have no idea. I think it was two years ago. Celeb Celebrity UK football. Yes. That was yes. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of the place because uh, we go all over. Yeah. You see, and I, sometimes I get so pissed the night before. I can't remember <laughs> where I fucking am. And that's the thing. It's it's such a good crack. I miss those days of um, okay. going out the night before, getting pissed, and then going on the football pitch, all fucking kind of hungover, and like, <laughs> oh shit! I went on with my fucking sunglasses once. <laughs> uh, and they were like, what, "What are you doing?" I got oh, my eyes hurt. <laughs> so um, it was one of them. So, yeah. uh, but it was so fun, you know. So I miss those days, you know. At the moment, we've just got to be grateful um, for what we've got, haven't we, really? Exactly. And you can do Zoom and all that. It's all about virtual stuff now, isn't it? It is. It's like us. We're talking on Zoom and, you know, meetings is all Zoom and yeah. auditions is pretty much Zoom. You know, it's it's nuts. Like, as well, it's like, you need to get off your phone. But I'm like, well, we can't now. <laughs> we <We've> got that. <laughs> <laughs> the phone is our contact to our other lives, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh. it's not. Why don't you do the Spotlight Theatre playing yes. Captain Hook? Yes. I was I was Captain Hook. Oh my right? god! Right in Peter Pan because they were going to do it. Paul Holman Associates he booked me and I was meant to play Captain Hook and then of course it all fell through. Um, mm-hmm. and then I done a panel with another company this year and I played like a a Gaston Baron Bourbon in Beauty and the Beast. You know. So that, yeah, on your yeah, it's brilliant. So I done that, and um, that was only for like two weeks, just over two weeks. Yeah, just a fucking good laugh. Um, so I was very lucky. Um, and, but my friend recommended me. So yeah, um, it's nuts, Amy. So you never know. I might be there this year it's if it happens. Enough for me, right? If I if but for people who don't like know who you are, which I'm sure not that many people. <laughs> I'm sure everyone knows. No, you. not many. <laughs> Uh, just introduce yourself. Okie dokie. So, hello everybody. I'm Stevie R. Ritchie from the X Factor Extraordinaire 2014. The man, the myth, the legend, the legend. Oh yes. The wild card, the last man standing. Yeah. I was there, the last wild card standing. That yeah. is me. Was, Sh- was Cheryl the one that brought you back? It was, wasn't it? 
Yeah, good memory, Amy. Yeah, yeah she brought me back. Um, uh, I think it was just to get on Simon's nerves, really. But yeah, um, I remember now. <laughs> <laughs> but to my like, to my um, like my surprise, Simon loved me. He absolutely loved me. You know, exactly. <laughs> we got along. He just likes crazy mad people like me. Yeah. So that's why we got along. Um, I weren't the best of singers. You know that. They know that. But I had something different to give. And that was, of course, just me it's being me. Entertainment show. You have to give yeah. entertainment for viewers. That's, I mean, that's what I'm about. I'm an entertainer. I'm not like an amazing singer. I'm not. I'm an entertainer. I'm a showman. That's yeah. what I do. I'm like a Freddie Mercury minus the big voice he had. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So in saying that, what made you want to audition for The X Factor? Okay, so what it was, Amy, I was sitting in a call centre one day and I've been auditioning and getting rejected for many, many years. Um, and I just said to myself, one day I sat there and I just went, do you know what? I just want to change my life for me and my daughter. That's it. Just I want to change my life this year for me and my daughter and that's it. And then what happened was um, uh, I, I heard they had X Factor auditions coming up in London. I missed that. So I applied thinking, oh, I'll, I'll just apply. You never know. Yeah. Um, and I weren't scouted, by the way. I wasn't called up on the phone okay. and scouted. I I literally had the choice of going to Liverpool or Birmingham. So what i done, I thought, well, I ain't going to bloody Liverpool. It's too far. So, <laughs> you know, it's miles from, from Essex, where I used to live, to Liverpool was like hours. So I thought, I'll go Birmingham. So it was only about three hours. So yeah. I travelled uh early morning uh and it was really raining and cold and i remember the day so well in my mind now and it was uh Birmingham city football stadium and there was thousands beyond thousands of people there as you can imagine yeah. wanting to be the next big thing and i thought to myself why am i even here you know <laughs> what what am i even doing here this uh, as if i'm going to stand a chance and this is the truth right the god's honest truth i sat there and i thought well I'm here now. I've got the day off my work. Yeah. I'm, I've got it. You know, I might as well, you know, um, have a laugh and just, just see how it goes. You know, and that, that was my general thought. I thought I'd have a laugh with the people. I'm not going to get anywhere, but I'm just going to be, just be me and have a laugh. Exactly. And I've got my shit covered. So anyway, four hours later, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, my days like that. I'm thinking, oh, I'm, <laughs> it's just really like knackering me. I'm knackered. And I had a song in my head, what I'm going to do. And, um, you go up to these booths, you see the uh, the producers, right? You see the producers of the show, um, and you can hear everybody in these booths. Like, they're like, <laughs> they're really like proper going yeah. for it. And yeah. I, I thought to myself, I can't, I'm, there's no way I could beat that. But, <laughs> and I was just about to turn around, right, and walk out the door when I thought to myself, something in my head just went, no, stay, Stevie, stay. So I did. So, cut a long story short, I went to this um, geezer at the back and he said, what are you, you going to sing? What This, that and the other. And I said, well, I'm going to sing a Freddie Mercury song. Uh-huh. George Michael, Freddie Mercury. Yeah. And I belted this song out and he said, I'm going to put you through. And I thought, are you sure? <laughs> and he went, yeah, I'm going to put you through. Come back tomorrow. So, that was it, really. Um, three auditions later, I got on the main show. And I saw the main judges. It was just phenomenal. Oh my God. Why did you just... Because you sang uh, Dance With Me Tonight by Ollie Mertz, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> why? So, <laughs> there's a story behind it. So but, what it was, the producer said to me, sing uh, Somebody To Love, a Queen song, uh, what you, okay. you know, we want to see perform. I was like, okay. So I got to, um, I got singing that. And then all of a sudden, his hand, Simon so put, put his hand up as he does oh, like that, right? <laughs> and I thought, oh no, this ain't good, right? <laughs> because when Simon stops you, you know it ain't good news, yeah. right? Yeah. So he looked at my list and he went, can you sing uh, Dance With Me Tonight? And I went, I said, Simon, I, I don't know it. <laughs> I don't know the song. And he went, it's on your list. I said, I know, but I was going to do that in the arena rounds. And of course <laughs> people started laughing and I and I thought to myself, oh, no, oh, no. He said, just sing it anyway. And I went, Simon, I don't know it. He said, just sing it anyway. So I did. So what i done, I had to blag it. And I thought, F I, I ain't going to know the words to this song. So there was me halfway through. I, I went, oh, no, what is the words? And then that's when you, you see me going, oh, uh, I'm standing here like an idiot. This goes on forever, doesn't it? You know, things like that. 
And I was just dancing away, thinking, oh, well, you know. And then all of a sudden, Louis started laughing. I thought, right. <laughs> then Cheryl started laughing. Then Mel B started laughing, yeah. right? No, so, so, yeah, Louis, Mel B, then Cheryl, then Simon started laughing. And I was like, oh, no. And then all the producers around me, all the crew started laughing. And I was like, okay. And then much to my advantage, it worked in my favour because it made everybody smile and laugh. Yeah. And they put me through. So there you go. That's crazy, isn't it? Like the fact you were meant to be like, you just turned around, but then it's, if you did, if you had turned around, your, your life would be so different. No, oh, absolutely. I was just, if they didn't laugh, if they didn't smile, I think I would have got a, a four nose. But because I did make them laugh on the day, yeah. and, and I think they needed that, they just they just said, yeah, we, oh, we, we, yes for me. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a scary thing going up against probably the biggest four judges you would ever think, in, especially Simon Cow, in your life. You know, because yeah. it is scary. I really bet yourself you think all my days i'm going up against the the biggest music producer ever in the world you know so that's what happened there you go oh my god the audition yeah. process is so long isn't it because when i'm at, like the main audition like mm. everything and he's like and then you're still not done <laughs> so yeah like, no no you've got a, it is a long process amy it is it's not just short and sweet you, you turn up in the day and you see the judges no 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 you know it's really a hard long but enjoyable journey a process i think um, that's what most people think don't they you just go into mm. the room in front of four uh judges. no it's not yeah people do do that and they they do kind of they think they turn up you see the judges but that's not the case, not no. really. So unless you're lucky to, you know, be like um, someone sees you on YouTube or something, go, oh, we would love you to put you to the to, you know, I don't know, we we fast track you, you know, or something. Yeah. So sometimes it happens, sometimes it don't. But for me, I never got any of that. I went through the back door, not the front door. Do you know what I mean, Amy? So yeah. But I will tell you what, honestly, what a journey that was. Amazing. It was super fun as well. Thank you, darling. Thank, well, thank you. I appreciate that. What I was, was all right. Like, did you tell your family your friend, and friends or did you just completely go <laughs> and do it? I, I didn't really tell many people that I got through because I thought, I don't want to fucking jinx this. <laughs> you know, um, so what I done, I just told my parents and a few close friends. And then, of course, I was working that night when I was aired, right? And people were like, um, fucking, hold on a minute. That's a, a, they were, they were, they were like, they were like, you, 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 you what are you doing on the set? What are you doing? And and they were just, I was getting like, I got even, a, a, I remember it so well, Amy, right? I got a tweet from Molly Merz that night, right? That night, it was a Sunday night. I got a tweet from him. And of course, I, I was quite new to Twitter. And I got a tweet from him saying, uh, from one Colchester boy to another, smash it in the next round at the Stevie Ritchie or something. And I was like, oh, my God, I just got a tweet off Ollie Murs. What the... What? <laughs> I was shocked because I've never had that in my life. No yeah. one's ever done a, a famous person like Ollie, who's one of the most successful people ever, let's be honest, yeah. um, other than One Direction and, and Ryland and all them. He's one of the most successful. So it's just like, wow, I've just got a tweet off Ollie Murs. So hey. it was it was brilliant. So... It was a shock, but I tell you what, it, it, people loved. They even to this day, right? People watch that video and they just go, they they just laugh because they say, oh, "I needed that today to for a laugh," yeah. and they laugh at it. But I don't know if it's with me or at me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it is, but yeah, honestly, no regrets, Amy. It's brilliant. Yeah, exactly. What kind of music did you listen to like growing up? Was it like pop music, bit of everything? Yeah, a bit of everything. I like. I'm a bit of an old school boy, so I, I used to listen to a lot of Elvis. I still do. Yeah. So Elvis was my kind of person. I kind of I used to be an Elvis impersonator, believe it or not, before oh, X Factor really? and all that. I done gigs. Yeah, me and my friend, we were like a duo called the American Legends, right? Oh, okay. and, and he was Buddy Holly. I was Elvis Presley. Uh, so he started first, then I went on, and then we finished together, kind of thing. So it was really good show, um, and we sold out at the the venue that we we done. We we sold out pretty much. Um, so Elvis was who I inspired to kind of be. Um, 
And then I started liking Queen, Freddie Mercury, and I was like, oh, fucking, this is brilliant. I love, you know, he, I've just got Freddie Mercury on the telly right now, actually, the story of uh, Live Aid, you know? Oh, wow. um, it's brilliant. So, yeah, and I just grew up listening to musicals as well, because I love yeah. my musicals. I love that, it. for me, you can't beat a musical. You can't. Literally, it's just so, like, feel good and just watch yeah. it smile all the time. One hundred percent, Ivy. You know, listen to a musical song, and and you can kind of relate to it. In some musical songs, you can relate to that song. Yeah. So that's what I do. If I can relate to that song, I sing it because then it gives me more feeling and emotion to it. It's weird, but that's how it works for me. Like Michael Ball, you know. Yes. And um, yeah. Exactly. Just nice, just to resonate with the song rather than just throwing it out there and be like, "Here's a song." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you get where I'm coming from. You're on my level, my page, so you know, and I love it. Honestly, Amy, it's brilliant. So yeah, that was kind of the stuff I sort of listened to. Okay, wicked. Okay, so oh my god, I've literally transitioned into acting. Well, believe it or not, this is another story. Um, before X Factor, uh, I used to be an actor. I'd done a lot of pantos, trained in musical theatre and acting school, uh, and it was along with flog. It paid a um, Mum and dad uh, put themselves in debt for me um, and I got a grant and this, that and the other. And I went to drama school. Um, and what happened was uh, when I went to Aura, I, it was called Academy of Live Recorded Arts. I had mental health, sadly. I, I got anxiety and mental health. I had to leave. Uh, rolled on a few years. I was a blue coat upon this blue coat. And then I went back into musical theatre school called the London School of Musical Theatre. So I recently trained as an actor. And I thought to okay. myself, well, yeah, this is what I want to do. I want to be an EastEnders because I, I, I've got, I'm Cockney anyway kind of thing, Essex, <laughs> you know. And I thought, oh, I'd love to be an EastEnders. And then I started listening to musicals. I thought, no, I want to be in a musical. And then I kept trying and trying and trying. I'd done loads of pantos and this and the other, playing various characters, mainly the silly Billy kind of role. Okay. Um, and then I just thought, you know what? Oh, I'm not getting nowhere. I'm getting rejected. Um, and then I entered X Factor. So I, I, I sort of originally was an actor before a performer, an act, you know, so now I'm sort of trying to get back into the acting scheme because that's, you know, it's just, that's my kind of, it's in my blood, you know? Yeah. So do you think like being on stage before has helped you? Now, do you put it on like your resume and everything? Like, yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Milk it, milk it. For, absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, if you've been on a big TV show, 10 million viewers a week, you know, X Factor, because that's what, my year was it was one of the biggest not the biggest like i think matt cardle and uh ollie Merz uh was one of the biggest but my year had 10 million viewers each week so i was happy with that um so i put that on my cv i put celebrity big brother on my cv yeah. why not you know you've got to put two big shows on your cv to go oh so he is kind of like a high profile name you know how was celebrity big brother was it like intense it, do you know what no regrets on that. I went in with uh, Chloe at the time, um, and we we got to the final. Uh, it, they paid us well. It was a good show. It was intense. Yeah. Um, and for me, it was it was a it was a good show. It was hard, but it was a good show. It, it kept me on my toes a lot. <laughs> so that was the thing with Big Brother. But you know what? No regrets. A great show, and I'm glad that I'm one of those few contestants, housemates that went in. And you know now it's finished, so I'm I'm very honoured to be a part of Big Brother. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so what is your favourite show you've performed in? Like oh, favourite show I've performed in, I would have to say. I mean, I've done a lot of pantos, right? Yeah. You see, I have, I have, and I love them, Amy. I think playing Buttons in Cinderella was probably one of my favourite ever roles because. It's just me being me on stage, yeah, like silly Billy, you know, the, the, the guy that couldn't get the girl, the pr the princess, you know, um, the guy that's always up for a laugh and a joke and makes people smile and happy and laugh and, you know, the Joker, the yeah. Joker. So it was me. That, so that was probably my favourite role, Joe Buttons in Cinderella, without a doubt. But one yeah. day, I love to do a West End show. You never know. I like to play the dentist in Little Shop of Horrors. Or, um, I love that show. Great show, in it. I done it in performing arts for my GCSE year. <laughs> oh, did you? What What did you play? Who? Do you know what? Can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I but it was a good show. 
I think I only chose performing arts because it was out of sewing and performing arts. I thought can't sew. Oh yeah, yeah. don't sew. Don't talk <laughs> about doing performing arts. <laughs> That is, no wonder why you chose Four Arts, and and you know that's the thing. Little Shop of Horrors is a great show, great yeah, show. Love it. Um, and one of my favourites, and I love to play the dentist one day on that. Or Les Mis is the ultimate. Yeah. Uh, and I like to play Tinardane, um, mm-hmm. or uh, Javert. So who knows? So a lot of um, things that you've got on your yeah. List. God, you got to aim high, Amy, because if you don't yeah. aim high, what's, what's the point? You know, exactly. you keep aiming low, you're like, Oh, I should have done that, like, but I didn't. Yeah, what's the point? always <laughs> aim. Uh, I, there's a saying, I um, always aim for the moon, and if you fall, you'll fall amongst the stars. Oh, that's a good quote. You like that? Yeah. yeah, so for me, like for you, if you got a if you want to dream big, yeah, so aim for the moon, and if you yeah. fall, you'll fall amongst the stars, so you'll be. You'll be a star anyway. Do you know what I mean? I love that quote. I've never heard that quote before. There you go, darling. See, take that on board. You can no, have that one for nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, you've already told me your dream show. How did you like reach out to Sue, like opaque artists? Did they find, did she find you? Because I've known Sue for like six years. Maybe six Wow. Years. Do you know, <laughs> see, this is the thing. I, 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 I was, uh, I saw her come out of my LinkedIn. Right, because yes, uh, I'm on li- LinkedIn as you do, and uh, I put a message here just out of the blue. I thought I'm not going to get replied back because she's obviously a really busy celebrity talent booker agent, whatnot. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I'm never gonna, I'm not going to get replied, but I will message her just to you know see uh, touch base. Yeah. So, so it was quite nice. I, I messaged saying, Hi, Sue, um, I hope you're well, I hope you're safe. Um, just wondering, are you looking to take on any clients at the moment? Uh, and I didn't hear back, and I thought, oh, that's up then. <laughs> anyway, um, little did I know, two weeks later, uh, uh, she said, oh, I'm sorry, I ain't got replied back to you sooner, see you, Stevie. I've been, I've had COVID, and I've been in the hospital. <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> you know, um, and that was my immediate reaction. I was like, are you all right? I, and I thought, oh, she's bloody not interested. But when she said that, it all made sense. And I was like, yeah. and, and she said, let's talk and arrange an interview. Um yeah, because she emailed me before she went in and got COVID. And then uh, I did thought nothing of it. And then she came out. And cut a long story short, we got talking. Uh, I phoned her. And this, she said, this is what you've got to do. And now i tell you what. I have to say, one of the best agents I've had in many, many, many years. So, yeah. uh, do you know what I mean? She is great. She's so, Seriously, Amy. She treats you like a friend as well. That's what I love about her. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's obviously businessy, but she's very much like, I'm your friend first. Um, mm. We used to go to a lot of events like with some of her band, and I met her there. I've known I've only known her literally. Well, the thing is, I met her at events, but I, I never knew. Um, she never told me who she was, the cow. Right? <laughs> um, but I was always polite to her. I was never rude, saying, oh, yeah, I never, I never belittle anyone, or I never think anyone's above or below me ever, no. Amy. Right? I treat everyone the same, and yeah, that's the way I expect. Look down to the bottom, and then yeah, yeah. exactly. Always be nice to people because you never know who you're bloody talking to. And I've learned that, right? And I really have. Mm-hmm. And anyway, so the reason the reason why Sue took me on is because she thought I'm easy to work with. I'm a nice guy. I've never ever was an asshole to her. Yeah, and she reckons I've got talent. So you know. That's why she's taught me on, Amy. So there you go. And I've learned that. But I've only known her properly for about about two weeks now, you know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, she literally two weeks. The you talk to her. <laughs> she's amazing. She phones me up most days. She says, right, I put you up for this. I've got you interview with this. I'm doing this. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's okay. kind of mind-blowing. Because I don't, I've never had that, like I say, in many years at all, Amy. Right, I never hear from my agents. I'm like, I barely hear once a month if I'm lucky. Sue, fucking, oh, excuse my French. She phones me like nearly every day or every other day, and I love that. Literally, I messaged her because I was like, you know, I'm setting up this YouTube channel for my blog. Um, like, is there anyone like kind of interview? And she was like, here's some lists, and I'm like, oh my god, okay. I asked for like, I was expecting one or two people, but here's a list. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. fabulous, thank you. And I'm glad that you've you've said yes to me because you went you could have gone don't want fucking him 
Do you know what I mean? List. No, no I, don't, I don't want to take me, Richie. No, no, you could have put your fingers up. But I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm grateful that you got me on. So honestly, it, it means a lot to me as it is to you. So thank you, honestly, Anna. You're so welcome. I'm good. Okay, so you've been to a lot of events, obviously. What's been mm. your favourite event, if you could choose one? Whew, there's a hard one. I know. <laughs> well, Tully's is good, yeah. but it, it, it's bittersweet that because yeah, I have good, good memories and bad memories about Tully's. Yeah. Um, uh, due to my personal life. But I would have to say I loved Circus Extreme. Oh, I've never it was, that. <laughs> it was brilliant. And what I'll tell you what a reason why, uh, because well, this I've got to be honest. Um uh I was seeing a girl, well, this uh, the girl I was going out with, it sort of, sort of kind of started from there. Oh, okay. Now I'm not gonna give her a name because I, I don't want to do that, but <laughs> I was seeing a girl a very well, quite well-known girl, okay. um, and started from there. So um, Circus Extreme has a really happy feel-good about it. And that's where Sue was, and I didn't know who the bloody hell she was there. So um, <laughs> that's that. So Tully's great, but Circus Extreme loved it. Brilliant. 100%. Love that. So what's, like, your advice for aspiring people, like – people who want to go into the acting and music industry, what kind of advice would you give to them? I would say you've got to just, and the, Shane Ritchie once gave me some advice and I never forget it. And I like Shane Ritchie's my idol, by the way. Yeah. Right. And I love him. And I've, I've worked with him. I never thought in a million years I would ever work with him. But I remember when I was 16 years old, I, he was at Pontins, right? And he was really like massive big back then. He still is now, but he was in Greece, the musical, and he was making loads of money. He was brilliant. And he's my idol. And he said to me, just believe in yourself. Believe in yourself and keep going. He, he said that to me. And it rang a bell to this day. Um, well, my, I'm 40 now. That was how long ago was that? That was like 34 years ago. Wow. He said to me, believe in yourself. You've got to believe in yourself. Because yeah. if you don't, what's the point? So anyone out there, I would say keep going. Believe in yourself. Stay true to who you are. Stay yeah. you. Take no notice of what anyone says. I.e., if don't don't keep thinking about what other people think because you'll get nowhere. And that is a, honestly, I cannot stress that enough, Amy. I for years, I always give a shit about what people thought of me. But then 2014, it all changed because I thought, you know what? I'm going to be me. I'm going to be me. Who I am. My true self. My my crazy, funny, outrageous, outlandish self. And it worked. It yeah. got me on X Factor. Because exactly. there's no point hiding away of the person you actually are. The because in the end. <laughs> yeah. It, it kind of don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. I have my moments of no, being a moon bugger. I'm just I'm just I'm just human. But 90% of the time I'm what you see now. I'm just me, I'm chatty, I'm uh, I'm funny, I'm well, I like to be funny. <laughs> and um, I'm just me so yeah but there's always that 10% when I have my off days and we all get them right yeah. we all get them off days so yeah stay true to yourself be you and don't change love that love that advice thank you darling <laughs> I, I overthink things overthinking is the worst trait it is because it can get you in a lot of trouble up here if you don't deal with it you know you can overthink everything and overanalyze and overthink and you think oh sh and it sh sh um <laughs> like yeah you can overthink everything and shit 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 uh like that you know especially lockdown like oh it's the worst my yeah. the first lockdown i was a nightmare i i was literally emotional anxiety in tears happiness sadness i broke up from my my fucking the lady friend and I thought, do you know what? Fucking can't cope for this. Um, but now, for me, quite honestly, I'm in a good headspace. I'm happy. I've got a job. I've got a gorgeous daughter, my mum and dad, my family. Uh, I've got a good agent. Thank you, Sue. Um, <laughs> shout out. <laughs> you know, big shout out to you. And, I'm, you know, I'm happy physically, mentally. Touch wood, I'm all right. You know, and I am, Amy. And when you can get to that, that sort of level then anything else that comes in as a bonus you know 
Absolutely, yeah. Just you got to stay positive. We don't know what. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, we all have down days. Fuck, I'm not saying I'm. I'm like, oh, chirpy every day. I'm not. <laughs> I, you know, one day during the week, I get, oh, I, feel, oh, I can't be fucking asked. You know, I get like that. But yeah. that's just, that's just me being me and human. Exactly. You know, so that's just, that's just me. But you know what? I'm this. I'm in a good headspace, and that's the way to be, Amy. That's all that matters. Too right, and that's the same with you. Be in a good headspace. So much for talking to me, Amy. You've been a pleasure, and you're very easy to talk to, and a good interview. Oh, so thank, thank you. you so much. I'm you're a natural. I loved. I love being interviewed by you. You're oh, very natural so and easy to talk to, and you know, I love that. So thank you. You're so welcome.